Welcome, everyone, to the Circle Debate Podcast Top 5 Picks of the Week here for Week 58, 58. This is the most devious one I've been seeing here with my family, the D-Generation West. We're sorry. I... That's right. And see, Matt representing the West Side because he has his hat. You know, like, what's up, my boy? What? What's up? In the West. Okay. What? This, was how, this is how you were cool back in, like, 96, 90, 96 to, like, 99. You know, I had my hat like this all the time in my Power Rangers shirt, you know? Hell yeah. Puff Hell Daddy, yeah. AZ, you know? <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. MGC, Matthew Callis, Steamboat. Yeah, this list is, is full of uh, things that, that even insects are worthy of, of course. <laughs> Go get out of my brain. <laughs> oh, there you go. And of course, we have the master disaster, the king of sting, the man with the plan. That is money, Mike Lopez, ladies and gentlemen. Um, he will be. His, he's having a little audio technical technicalities, but he'll be with us because we're saving him best for last for this. Uh, you're not the American hero no more, Mike. You are money, Mike. You're no longer the American hero, Mike. Yes, you still, you still have the 24-inch, no, no, what is it, not 24-inch, the 12-inch pythons, you still have them. You still have the 12-inch pythons, you still do. <laughs> so today, ladies and gentlemen, today's top five picks of the week. As you saw last week, the wheel landed on top five cruiserweights. So we're looking forward to speaking about these cruiserweights doesn't have to necessarily be one organization. There's sort of different promotions like WCW, WWF at the time, New or even or New Japan. So many. And it's hard. I mean, it's three different uh, terms, light heavyweight, junior heavyweight, cruiserweight. I, and in TNA, sometimes it's X division, you know, that's like, because the X division used to have like a weight limit. Like mm -hmm. they kind of went back and forth, went back and forth with it. Even though, like, Samoa Joe was X Division champion and so was Kurt Angle. Sometimes they put a weight limit on it. Sometimes they don't. So, right. yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, whoo, I did forget about that. They actually had a weight limit before. Back in the world. It was, that was, what, NWA TNA back in the day when they introduced the X Division title? X Division title. That's, Ooh. like, was the greatest, one of the greatest treasures uh, outside of WWE. Yes, and because of that, that's how WWF, WWE, I'm sorry, they tried to, they, they brought back the Cruiserweight uh, doing those type of tournaments because, you know, without TNA, you know, that was the hottest thing, what, what 2000, what, I would say four, no, five, right? Five, six, all the way to like 2009. For those, that many years, TNA was the hottest thing, whoever's in the next division and whoever's competing for that title. And it was stupendous. Glorious it was. But all right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to it. Let's see who this list was difficult for everyone. Well, for me especially. I don't know for anyone else, but for me it was. So no wheel today because it would be easy when we're saving money, Mike, for last. So I'm going to go ahead and start it off. I'll go first. Of course, I'm, i got to save the the God amongst insects of <laughs> podcasting, and that is, of course, Matt Catalyst. I have to save him. So let's start it off. My number five, that is, why? Because he actually took that division to a level that was kind of recognized. Then later on, someone else came in, and that was, of course, Esa Rios, Mr. Aguila. That's my number five right there. Rios. Yes. I very enjoyed him very, very, very much. Um, underrated as hell yeah, in, in that division. Did a lot, I mean, his moonstall was like... Uh, like a flowing late moon sort of like what the fuck wow I mean that kind of like really got him to me and he really represented the cruise of the light heavyweight division very well and it I think him, Lito, right yeah him, him and Lito him and Lito and he did a, a, an incredible job you know before even even outside of WWE when he went back to Mexico he did a great he's still doing it you know before he retired I don't know if he retired yet but I mean he did a fantastic job still in Lucha Libre for me, I mean, hands out to him to try to keep that, you know, light heavyweight division up to par at the time in WWF. So I got to give it to him. Which brings my number four, and that's 
X Pac. I love X Pac because come on, he, you yeah. know, yeah. Yeah. you think you better? <laughs> well, you better get ready to bow to the masters. Oh shit, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so yes, X Pac, my number four. Of course, man. I love how him being badass heel for that light heavyweight and for the cruiserweight and the battles that he had too with his other individual I mentioned. But um, man, X Pac was another one too. And it's funny because you could say he was kind of the originator of that light heavyweight because back in the golden era, he was, you know, one the kid when they went to three kid. At the age of what, 16, 17? Like, Jesus. He main evented Monday Night Raw against Bret the Hitman Hart. That was a classic match, by the way. I think I have that on a VHS tape. I have, still have that VHS tape to this day. Oh, uh, but yes, X Pop 123 Kid did a great job being a cruiserweight and light heavyweight. My number three, of course, it's the Ultimo Dragon. Of course, it's, I love Ultimo Dragon. And this My guy did solidify. Every belt made it prestige, held over five championships in that division in every different territory promotions. This this individual has done it all. And man, his matches incredibly, you know, incredible matches. Uh Ultimo Dragon is a legend. Uh, I'm hoping we can see him in the Hall of Fame one day. Love his match against Rey Mysterio. Love, I love his match with Dean Malenko. Like, if you go back to his WCW and New Japan days, or even all Japan days, even him with Great Sasuke, another great match, too. Man, they fucking went all out. Ultima Dragon, hands down, a badass freaking light heavyweight in the cruiserweight. He's done it all. My number two is, of course, uh, Mr. Shooting Star Press himself, Billy Kidman. I actually love Billy Kidman on that one. That's the best theme, I gotta I, say. I like that one, and then the one he did when he went heel. Oh, yeah. Run, run, run. I forgot the rest of it. <laughs> I, run, because you can't hide. I love that song. I forgot who sings that shit. I said, you don't know? You, yeah, I forgot who the fuck sings yeah. I think it might be like just like an in-house rapper or something. No, I think it was fuck. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have to look for it one day. Cause yeah, you know what? That's a good workout song too, by the way. I like it when you're running. Cardio. That's right. It's what do you mic? <laughs> and of course, my number one. No, ladies and gentlemen, is not Ray Mysterio. Cause I don't consider Ray Mysterio as a cruiserweight. Not really. Not anymore. Uh oh, Mike's not gonna have about that. Of course. Okay, okay, Mike. Oh, what do we do? This we'll do a tie. We'll do a tie there. My number one, of course, we can say Red Mysterio, but the other one is the man who started it all when it comes to that, and that is Jushin Thunder oh, Liger, right. because. Well, you said it. Da 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 Yes, he's my number one because he solidified and created, because of him, a junior heavyweight title was created. He created the J-Cup in New Japan. Because of him, he started that J-Cup. This individual began and solidified the junior heavyweight division and was recognized in the States because of what he has done in Japan. And people don't really understand that. That here back then... If we go way back then, there was no such thing as a cruiserweight, light heavyweight. Before the Mysterios, before any of the Kidmans, none of that. It was all because of Juice and Thunder Liger. When Inoki started recognizing as a junior heavyweight, then they decided to go ahead and do it here in the States. Circle of the Bay people are giving you the knowledge. And if you don't think I'm incorrect, ask Matt Carlos, because he is. The, you can ask him the 69 questions. Yeah, you know, I've got I've got sixty nine reasons why. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, that's my number one. Along, you can okay, alongside with Ray Mysterio, Mike. Okay, I, I, I'll 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 put that. Okay, yes, but yes, because you know, Liger, if it wasn't for him, none of this would have existed in the states. 
in my opinion. I might get heated by this, but I'm, I'm my apologies, people. But I mean, those um, these are facts. Yeah, I'd say that. I'm not a uncle piece of shit. I'm not. Okay, my two honorable mentions. Um, my first honorable mention. Another person from you know that doesn't really get his credit as well, and it's unfortunate because he kind of like I think his 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 existence in the WWF kind of started all over again to attract international stars and actually they even did a tournament to crown their first ever light heavyweight champion that is taka michinoku taka yep. michinoku founder of michinoku pro yes exactly founder and of Michi of the michinoku driver yeah the innovator the creator of the michinoku driver that is now known under his last name and everybody uses it nowadays and it's called the Michinoku Driver. What else can you call it? You can call it anything else. It's like Jake the Snake created the DDT. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura uses like a variate, used to use a variation of it as his finisher too. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I've seen Hikaru Shida use it quite a bit too, as of recently. She's done like versions of it. Yeah. And of course, my other, I have, I'll have two more. We forgot to add. I forgot to add a TNA one. I have to give this other one very quickly. And that is Gregory Helms. Mm. Stand in the back. There's a hurricane coming through. Uh, what's up with that? I have to say that for you, Gregory Helms. Another great cruiserweight and a great that uh, he actually held in for WCW for quite some time and try to elevate that division as well with the remaining cruiserweight that was left there before it was purchased by WWE. So. He tried his best to keep it alive as possible, and he did do it in, in WWE when he went to the, you know, when he came, uh, when he was bought out. So he tried to do the same thing as well. So did the best that he can. But Gregory Holmes should be giving credit. He's yeah, like a, one, one of the last ones. Does he host a podcast now? Too? I think he does. Yeah. I don't know. If not, he appears on a lot of, if not, he appears on a lot of podcasts. Not here at Circle Debate. What's up with that? You got to come over here. Come yeah, come on, Gregory Shane Helms. Come come visit us. X-Pac's got his podcast. So, like, you can get into the mind of a cruiserweight wrestler and really get to know, like, the building blocks of it all. You know, I don't know what, what Jushin Thunder Liger does. He does commentary for New Japan now. Yes, he does. That's yeah. all he does now. And, of course, my last auto mention of the one who kind of really solidified that, that X-Division in TNA, people, I mean, we could say, I want to say AJ, but he's not a cruiserweight anymore. He's a heavyweight more. But I just think that really got everything exciting. And that's actually Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn did a lot for TNA, NWA at that time. His matches against Amazing Bread. He was again. WWF light heavyweight champion. Yes, he was. And Jerry, did, <clears throat> Jerry Lynn, baby. He did a lot for the X Division and to get it where it is at this day. Alongside was a lot of guys mentioned, like Amazing Bread, Low Key, Cabal, AJ at the time when he was at that. Christopher Daniels, another one. Ela Skipper, another one. So many talented individuals in that roster at the time. It was hot. His cradle pile driver, like that. The first time I ever saw the cradle pile, pile driver, the Dodge driver was when Jerry Lynn did it on two TNA. Yes. And I loved it. I loved it. So now we got God of Monsters and Sex of podcasting. Matt Callis, the floor is yours. It's like, should I, I'm kind of debating with myself if I should just be regular Matt or should be Matt Callis while I do this. Maybe half and half. I don't know. Possibly. <laughs> Money Mike saying, yeah. Yeah, I, I think the first two I'm just going to do is regular Matt. Just like, Billy Kidman's my number five. Uh, you know, the Shooting Star Press is, is really like, everybody says he has the best one. It's like, you know, but, you know, there's a lot of a lot of guys. Can't, there was a few guys before him that used the Shooting Star Press, but he's probably one of the most well-known in the United States to use the Shooting Star. Billy Kidman's, uh, I, he's a trainer now for NXT. Nowadays, I believe. And producer for WWE too. Yeah, he's a producer as well. 
I, I loved his matches. He really developed this character over time. They put him in a feud with Hulk Hogan. My God. It's like, and, and I think he was, you know, I'm going to do, I don't know if you guys covered this in worst backstage, well, backstage moments. He was in the Viagra on a pole match against, uh, against uh, what's his name? Which wrestler? Oh, yeah, um, the franchise, Shane Douglas. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That was horrible. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's like, and then one of his best matches, like one of my my favorite, was him versus Paul London. It was like the battle of the shooting star presses. Oh my god, I forgot about Paul London too, man. Shit, and Brian Kendrick too. Shit, mm-hmm. that whole uh, you know Shannon Moore, like the whole that whole family of uh, of wrestlers. But yeah, Billy Kidman's great. You know, long history with him. All right, number four. It's a little bit of a special one. Psychosis. Yeah, baby. Yeah. The Psycho- original one, people, not the part two or third generation of the original. O- OG psychosis. Yeah. Like watching him on WCW, I caught him a few times on, on Telemundo. Wh- which one wh- was it? CMLL or AAA on Telemundo? Uh, AAA. Yeah. I-, I caught him there and they gave him like, I remember the announcer, like when he came to the ring, gave him a really long intro, like Psychos! Like it's almost like John Moxley. It was like, but like it, it was way longer than that. That was like the longest psychosis intro I ever watched him. And he was doing all kinds of really cool shit, you know. Two-time WCW cruiserweight champion, psychosis, you know. I've been looking for time. Like, I was so excited for this episode. I couldn't wait to mention him. Wait. Oh, yeah. That whole headgear. He wrestles with that headgear on. I'm not going to stop saying this to about Tommaso Ciampa. Find a version of your mask that you could wear to the ring. Like, I get, su- I get it's such a letdown to see you take that off, you know, when you go in the ring. I want him <laughs> to leave it on because it looks cool, you know. Mm. Friggin- All right. Next one up. Ultimo Dragon is actually my number three. Mm-hmm. We're both in the same way. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> duh, 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 duh. Like, think about his his students though. Like, we're really seeing his 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 um, well, Ultimo Dragon's uh, protege is kind of like really, you know, I wouldn't say go further than him because I know in Japan and in Mexico he's like had so many different titles. But as far as like United States television wise. Like, some of his prodigies, like, still have, like, their whole career ahead of them. Yeah, agreed. Pac, Ricochet, you know, Pac, Ricochet, Shima. Like, Shima's opening up China to the wrestling world. And all three of them were in Dragon Gate. Shima was a former Dragon Gate champion. Ricochet, former Dragon Gate champion. Uh, and Pac's a former Dragon Gate champion. And they've all been on, like, U.S. television with AEW and WWE, you know. Shima, like, like, like they're all the like Dragon Gate. Like, I, I talk about Noah quite a bit, but I gotta really bring up Dragon Gate. Like, everybody, they should always be mentioned in that conversation. Say, like New Japan, All Japan, Noah, Dragon Gate. Those are the big four. And DDT is kind of like the funny one, but at the same time, they've got some pretty good serious wrestling going on there too. But you know, the, those main four for like men's wrestlers. You know, those would be the four I'd always want to bring up. All Japan, New, New Japan, Noah, Dragon Gate. Those are the four you should always think about. Because Dragon Gate, like, even the Young Bucks are former Dragon Gate tag champions. A lot of really, a lot of really great ones. And Ultimo Dragon, he created that, you know, he created that nest for all these great wrestlers to be. In addition to his amazing arsenal of moves, you know, Dra- like that acai moonsault like one of the best out there is his acai, acai moonsault one of the coolest ones of them all his influence felt on jericho you know and cody ibushi mm-hmm. go to ibushi as well mm-hmm. ultimo dragon the, he's right. like the vintage of acai, moon, uh, acai moonsault what i think the something like michael cole would say oh my god there's a vintage Asai <laughs> I say OG 
acai moon salt. I think if we were commentators, that's what we'll say. We're like, oh, the old school acai moon salt. Oh, gee. So, you know, my number two, Tiger Mask One. Oh, yes. Love it. Tiger, he's, he's the, I'd say like, if Jushin Thunder Liger is the Ramones, then Tiger, Tiger Mask is probably like the Stooges or like the New York Dolls, you know. Like oh, if, I love that. Love that. Yeah. that. Mm-hmm. yeah, if Cruiserweight Wrestling was punk rock, then, you know, like Tiger Mask is probably like the Stooges or, you know, let me think, maybe like the Who even, you know, like pre like proto punk pro that's proto cruiserweight wrestling right there you know playing blitzkrieg bop on guitar you know <laughs> oh, yeah. tiger mask and jushin Thund- thunder liger playing guitar together but yeah he's the you know he's the the og tiger mask one his match with dynamite kid you know satoru sayama you know o- the og og that's og you know? right there hell yeah Pioneer of that move. Everybody thinks about like his move, like his cr- leg crisscrossing and his footwork, mm. the quick movements. Like somebody, like I, I know I've talked about him before, but you know he's like the people have said he's the Bruce Lee of wrestling. You know. Yeah, I heard. I I hear a lot of them about that. I but yeah, but it seems like I think I think he is. I can't say that he's not. I agree. So. My number one. Let's get right. First, first, same as the first, Jushin Thunder Liger. That's it. I, I correct me if I'm wrong. They said he was like one of the first to use the the shooting star press. Yes, he was. Yeah, his shooting star press is like. And here's a fun fact: people don't know. Um, I'm not sure. I'm I'm pretty sure the wrestler came before the manga. In Japan, they created a manga for Jushin Thunder Liger, and it's multiple chapters. And he's like a superhero over there. So there's like a lot of stuff included. You know, he's doing, like we mentioned earlier, he's doing commentary for New Japan. They've got Jushin Thunder Liger, like teddy bear plushies, and stuff like that. You know, he's he's like a culture on, onto himself, you know. Yeah. They put him yeah. up, and, and like, I think because of it, I think Chris Jericho was Super Liger, the all-white outfit. And I think, okay, AEW, Tony Khan, if you guys are listening, let's have a Super Liger versus Jushin Thunder Liger kind of like one-off match. Just Jericho does one match as a Super Liger for old time's sake. That would be kind of fun, you know. That would be fun, right? Hey, one, (laughs) why not? Yeah, get Jushin out of retirement and go ahead and do it. Fuck it. Just do do one off, like over and maybe for like the one AEW show they do in Japan. All right, my honorable mentions. All right, my second, uh, my my number two on honorable mention is Prince Devitt, Finn Balor. Finn Balor! Very directly influenced by uh, Jushin Thunder Liger. There's a character of Jushin Thunder Liger he does, Kishin Liger, where it's just like he, his face is painted like Kiss, and he's spitting blood, and he's just doing like hardcore wrestling like it's like evil liger right face painted all white with makeup like the evil liger that's where finn balor got inspiration for the demon like his demon character from kishin liger so finn balor prince devitt he like he was one of the best light heavyweight champions over there in new japan had a lot of great matches and one of his best matches segueing into my number one was against now Michi Marafuji. <laughs> Marafuji was light heavyweight champion for New Japan, light uh, junior heavyweight champion for New Japan. And for his run in New Japan, he faced Okada, he faced Tanahashi, he faced a lot of a lot of people on that lineup. You know, he faced uh, you know so many people, so many people. List list goes on and on, but yeah. That's my list, my my seven, you know. I love it. I love it. Yes. It looks like we're going to have to wait until Money Mike for a few minutes and, and see what's... Couldn't, you couldn't keep me away forever, Matt. <laughs> it's a next-level consciousness list. Now, 
get out of my brain. Go away. <laughs> in, in the meantime, they should have, Okay. Uh, oh, he's... Oh, my God. He spoke. I he spoke. Is... I'm here. Um, getting my list ready. Okay. Great. Great picks. Um, yes. Okay. So, worst cruiserweights. Number five. Joy Chaos. No, oh wait, this is the best one, right? Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Oh, my Billy Kidman god. is my number five. Uh why man, this guy had it all, man. This guy had the look, the moveset, you know. Uh I, I really feel like he is due for an for an induction to the Hall of Fame. Um Yes, so all that good stuff, you know, uh, and he, like he, Matt said, he feuded with Hulk Hogan, you know, mm. man, like a, a guy that size didn't just feud with, you know, the Hulkster. Uh, so, you know, a lot of credit goes to him on that. Uh, let's see. Number four is Matt Hardy. Now. Oh, my God. Really? Now, I Do remember that. Do you consider Matt Hardy as a cruiserweight? Because I remember he won the, the, you remember the angle with Shannon Moore and he's like dieting and everything. Yes, he, oh lo- he cut the weight, he won the title. He's a cruiserweight now, so entertaining, so entertaining. Him seeing uh, him losing all that weight, and you know, he was in a uh, in a sweatsuit. Uh, trying to get all that weight off. Oh my! I need a beer for this. <laughs> I'll be back. Jesus. And honestly, it led to Matitude. It just, that's one of my all-time favorite gimmicks of his. Uh, second only to the, the broken character. Matt, I was full of Matitude back in the day, man. Yeah, version one, that's right. I, I, I was doing this with everybody. I'm like, yeah, you got it. I got to take your attitude and turn it into Matitude. I'm know. sorry, my attitude to Matitude is like, what's, what the fuck? What's up with that? Him being a version one. Version See that? One. Version one. He got and the right attributes. Yeah, come on, Ivan. Get with the Matitude. Oh, uh, <laughs> number three, Eddie shot, Guerrero. Though. I'll go with Eddie Guerrero on this one. Uh, you can't say Eddie Guerrero was not a cruiserweight. I mean, come on. Especially in his WCW days. All those classic matches, you know, with Rey Mysterio and Juventud and all that good stuff. Yeah, I mean, Eddie Guerrero, phew, he was years ahead for sure. A, a true icon uh, for cruiserweights. Um, so, yeah, definitely number three by far. Uh, number two, Rey Mysterio. This man, okay, granted, I did give you a little... You uh, gave me uh, shit for putting him in number two. What for not having him as number one? You number two? What um, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I had him on the list, um, and and once you see my number one, I hope that you'll understand why. Um, yes, Rey Mysterio. He is my number two. The he was such a. I mean, he still is. He's a, a pretty good wrestler. You know, I feel like he's kind of slowed down uh, given age and, and wear and tear and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, I always remember Halloween Havoc, him and Guerrero. I actually recently watched that match over again. And total classic, total, you know, if I were to have a, a wrestling school, I would totally share this match. And, uh, you know. All that good stuff. So lots to learn from Rey Mysterio. If you're a cruiserweight, definitely. My number one is Y2J, Chris Jericho. Okay, I'm done. Good night, everybody. What the? Wait a minute. Oh, he, was a, like, he, he was in his early days. He was in his early days. Yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, Next level consciousness. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, my God. Okay. Our, I think I know where our, you're going with this. It One of our be, books from because it, it has to be the list, right? Like him breaking down Dean Malenko's hold, like the man of a thousand <laughs> moves. Yes, and Dean Malenko yeah. was a former uh, light heavyweight champion. Yes, he was, um, Don. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, he was. And, you know, 
okay, right now he's not definitely not considered a heavyweight. I mean, uh, he is considered a heavyweight right now. <laughs> um, no offense, Chris. Uh, but, you know, back in the day, he, you know, he was all over the place, you know, high flying and whatnot and then doing some cool stuff. He could still do a moonsault. I mean, come on now, you know. <laughs> it took him quite to do it because remember the first time is he saw his forehead, it's more like he slided. Like, yep, he ate his shit. <laughs> and he had to try it again because he knew he, oh, was getting, he was getting shit all over social media because of it. <laughs> well, number one, undisputed champion, uh, Chris Jericho. I'll tell you, okay, I'll, I'll give you that reason because Matt could probably give him more explanation than I can. If we go back to his Lionheart days in New Japan, that explains it all. His match versus Pegasus, Chris Benoit, Tiger Mask, Eddie Guerrero. That was for the junior. That was a J Cup, I believe. It was a tournament, or was it? For the, or was it for the junior heavyweight champion? If you remember, Matt Callis. It's like because of the very fact that he is Super Liger and and Jushin Thunder Liger is the penultimate cruiserweight, you know. So so the fact that Chris Jer they wanted to make Chris Jericho the next Jushin Thunder Liger kind of is like saying him all that he's a very definitive uh, cruiserweight, and especially since this cruiserweight won world championships you know down the line like when he was undisputed champion he was he wasn't any bigger than he was during his time in like you know wcw or new japan you know but um see christian but but it's very it's very worth he's very worthy of cru the cruiserweight title especially the fact that him and jushin thunder liger are like often mentioned together it's funny because there are that you can say they're similar alike of what they accomplished in their careers on their ter territories. Like with Jusha, he's a, he, at least he was able to go to different promotion as well as Jericho. So you can say that they're both the good jokes. The yeah. good jokes. And in, in, in he's smaller than Shawn Michaels, you know? And Shawn Michaels is a small guy compared to like Diesel and Vader and all those dudes, you yeah. know? So. It's not a stretch to put him in that category, I would say. All right. You're the door for bigger guys to have that world title, to be like the, the, the ace, the company ace, rather than it just being like Hulk Hogan's and Lex Luger's all the time. And, you know, and, and what was it? Vader's just like, because Vince is so big guy centric, you know, it was so great that somebody. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's like, you know, you're not seven feet. I don't want to make you world champion, you know. That's true. That is First true. honorable mention is has to be Ricochet. This mm -hmm. guy, man, I always remember when him and Velveteen Dream had that promo and, oh, anything you can do, I can do better or whatever. He jumped over the top rope, landed on his feet, and, uh, you know, basically challenged show him me. to do the same thing. Yeah, show me. Show me. Oh, man. <laughs> he dropped <him>. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Oh my god, that was instant classic. I love it. Yeah, Ricochet. total, total classic. Ricochet, that's another, that's an Ultimo Dragon uh, protege. Yeah, uh, you know, I wish I would have seen Ultimo Dragon in his prime. You know, uh, I didn't really catch a lot of WCW uh, early on, so. But he I, I was, he was in w yeah. But remember, he was in WWE too. Remember. SmackDown. He was SmackDown. SmackDown. He was there very only briefly. for like a split second. They didn't know how to use him, honestly. They, they did not know. know how to use him. All, okay, all I remember about Ultimo Dragon was him slipping on the entrance way <laughs> of WrestleMania 20. <laughs> I know. I know everybody remembers that shit. He, he was on. He was on Velocity <clears throat> a lot. They put him on Velocity several times. No, but they know. put him on a main event against him and him and Mysterio one time. But that one, it wasn't like the best compared to what he's done in WCW against Rey Mysterio. I'll tell you that. Those were bad matches. Bad ass. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well. And second honorable mention for me is Pac. I like his style. I like how he can hang with the, with the, with the bigger wrestlers, you know. Uh, I, that, that, those flips that he did, uh, um, in WWE, I, I haven't seen him do do that in AEW. Uh, but it's like a how about the broken it? arrow? No, 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 no. It was he's stand he's standing up. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I I don't know what that what that's called, but what was it called? Yeah, I I didn't know it had a name. 
he did a flip to it. Like, I don't know, he did so many flips, right? Like, he was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Quick. Oh my, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I haven't seen him do that in AEW. I'm, I have not I'm seen guessing it doesn't, it doesn't fit his character, I'm guessing. Nah, uh, he's a bastard. There you go. He's damn. a bastard. Yeah. That's, why. That's why he has the <laughs> brutalizer now. Yeah. So, yeah, he would be my second honorable mention. Mm -hmm. No third one? Uh, no. No, I mean, the list is the list. Uh, yeah, you see, you made me add uh, Mysterio number one tied with Juice and Thunder, and you added number two. What's up with that? <laughs> Ouch, my ears. Um, yeah, uh, you know, it's it just, it is what it is. Rey Mysterio was not ever the first ever undisputed champion. There you go. He didn't beat The Rock and Stone Cold in the same night, back to back, single handedly. So there you go. Okay. There you have it. All right. Opening the door for like smaller size wrestlers to be great champions. Okay. Absolutely. He did. And don't forget, I mean, Owen Hart did. And, you know, it's funny that Owen Hart kind of, too, died in my kid with one, which mm -hmm. we are going to have soon, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to review which one was the best uh, from top, you know, the top five uh, Dark Side of the Ring season three. It was almost, it's about to be over with the Dynamite Kid. I think that's the last one, right? I think Dynamite Kid's the last one. I, I thought know. they were doing Plane Ride from Hell. Oh, you're right. Never mind. There's the you know, Stormwatch. Shit, I forgot. The they Dynamite still... Kid one, I'm, I'm most anticipating because he, didn't he also do All Japan in addition to New Japan? Yeah, he did. So, yeah. He did. He did. And they're going to explain it there as well. Um, and that kind of went. So pretty soon we'll do a top five uh, Dark Side of the Ring uh, for season three. season three, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Frank Jopo wants to do one with us. So Frank, you're watching this. We will be waiting for you so we can do it. We can grade which one's from our, you know, from like our five to our number one. Ever. And I already know which one's my number one, but I'm going to wait until the whole season's over. So it's going good by far. I love it. I love it. <laughs> love it. All right. So now let's go to the wheel picks and see what is our next pick for week 59. Let me share my screen. All right, what is next? Spin that wheel. wheel. <laughs> yes. This is going to be so great. <laughs> I love it. I'm so excited. Oh, my God. I am, too. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Where's Steve's song? Oh, man. This is going to be epic. This is going to be so great. Let's do this. I already, come on. I already know which one's going to take my worst one of all. I'm going to. I don't give a shit, I'm gonna spoil it right now, of course. Uh, I can't play it because of YouTube monetization and everything else, but... Sing it. There's no singing to it, it's a fucking warning. Warning. Oh, this is annoying, <laughs> I don't even think about it. Jesus, Peter Richard. What, whoever, whoever fucking thought about the Demet as a theme song, go to hell. Go with you, Poppy. I, I hope it wasn't Bruce. I hope it, was it sounds like a Bruce idea to me. <laughs> oh my god, man. But yes. Oh by the way, everybody had incredible picks. Yes, you see how it's the it was very difficult to so many cruiser and light heavyweights and junior heavyweights that it was difficult to choose from. We could even chosen Will Osprey. But we didn't. We could have chosen Amazing Red, but we didn't. We could have chosen Cabal, low key. Even Frank Kazarian, because he wasn't like he wasn't like heavyweight, but we're, uh, it, it was it was tough, ladies and gentlemen. So, if you have your top five, comment right below on the video. I want to hear your uh, your top five um, cruiserweights that you, you probably we did not mention, and let us know, and we'll be reading there. And I would like to see who you know. If, if, it's, if we did not mention any cruiserweights on our list, mention yours right below on this video. Comment right below. 
Do not forget also to subscribe at the end of this video. Subscribe, whatever it is, right there at the end. Do not forget. And also want to go ahead and thank our audio platform listeners all over to India. And of course, I hope you guys enjoyed yesterday's rest of the net. We will be in which will obviously we did a trivia. So you're hoping you guys will enjoy that. It's gonna be fun and watch it, you know. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And also don't forget also uh next week we will be discussing as well the um what happened on yesterday's uh the against all odds impact we'll be discussing as well as today for nxt takeover in your house pay-per-view giving our thoughts about that more aw news much more to come on 59 yes 59 we're yeah we're almost at 60 mark we've got a special ones coming up too and we got special upcoming interviews as well uh so keep an eye on that on our social media platforms coming to you soon baby so once again ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for enjoying for tuning in and enjoying your, enjoy your sunday afternoon or morning time or evening time wherever you are so this is the hopes people going out to see and of course with the man with the plan the master disaster the king of staying he, he's he is the list of all lists right here he is the by god a podcast god by god a podcast by god and he's waiting for that debate with the tribal chief of podcasting. He's waiting for that debate. Ha ha ha. That's right, money might be looking for it. Make sure, make sure you acknowledge, not the tribal chief, but the by car podcast. Movement. And of course, his manager, his, his compadre, with remember that you know we are gods among insects because because he is god about podcasting as well god that among is... podcasters you see guys we don't make podcasts we make do 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 uh, once again, I'm gonna let Mike translate it, then I'm gonna let Matt end it. So, Mike, translate in Germany and let the German people, our audio platform, listen in Germany. Uh, good, guten Tag, alles, all unsere Freunde und Freunde Deutschland. Wir, wir sind Circle of Debate. Und <laughs> vielen Dank, wir lieben Sie. Guten Nacht, guten Abend, guten Tag. Danke. There you go. And Mr. Callis, let the people know, and also, also our audio platform listeners, what do we do here at Circle Debate? Yeah, we don't make, we don't make podcasts. We make do 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 do